and showtime ladies and gentlemen welcome to another episode of the channel pro five minute roundup a look at news trends and tips for the smb channel in five minutes or thereabouts my name is rich freeman i am executive editor of the channel pro network also a host of this fine program i am joined this as every week by uh, your other co-host eric simpson a business transformation and improvement consultant for msps and other it providers eric how goes it this week it goes fantastic, Rich. Uh, first week of February. Can you believe it? January is already in the books. 11 months to go in 2021. How about that? How about that? It does seem so, uh, just like yesterday, we were talking about New Year's and all of a sudden we're in February. Man, I'm telling you, where does the time go? And that means, uh, you know what, we're we're very close to uh, the return of baseball. And it, it, next thing you know, it's going to be spring. Yes. Yes. Next thing you know. So, uh, it'll, you know, <laughs> uh, we'll be talking about that. Like it was just yesterday in the, in the upcoming show. I know. So, uh, yeah, we're, we're blazing right through the new, the new year already. February is upon us and, uh, first acquisition news story of the year for us, right? You're absolutely right. Yeah. That's our top story this week. And, you know, acquisition news in, in the world of managed services, there's nothing uh, all that unusual about that. Uh, and this is an acquisition uh, that was made or announced this week by ConnectWise. Again, um, nothing unusual about that. In fact, ConnectWise uh, acquired two uh, security companies just a few uh, months ago, Stratazen and, and Perch Security. And companies like Kaseya and Datto are, are active in the acquisition world uh, as well. So nothing unusual about that. But this particular acquisition is a little bit unusual. They purchased a company called Service Leadership. Uh, now, you may know it better as the consultancy, the managed services consultancy created and run by Paul Dippel. That's a very familiar name uh, in the MSP world. Uh, and Paul does what a number of different managed services consultants do. But what's a little bit different about his business is that um, he has this kind of amazing pool of data that a lot of his work is, is based on. Four times a year, he goes out to thousands of MSPs around the world. He collects all sorts of profile data from them. Uh, that allows him to see what traits, what qualities top performing MSPs, the most operationally mature MSPs have in common. Uh, and then he also has, that's called uh, the, the service leadership index, that pool of data. He's also got something called SLEEK, as in uh, SLIQ, service leadership IQ. It's a self-serve web application that MSPs can use to measure their business against those top performing MSPs in the index and build a roadmap for how to get to a, you know wherever they are to where they wanna be if they wanna get into that top quartile uh, of MSPs. ConnectWise views this particular acquisition as a very strategic one because um, it's going to enable them to create sort of a tripod uh, of, of value added offerings to their partners. First and foremost, the products um, that they offer, but they also have the IT Nation uh, community and uh, peer groups. And now they will have this pool of, of very rich, very objective uh, business performance data that they're going to be able to um, teach their customer success managers uh, to, to share with partners and, and coach partners on, on drawing on. They're going to be able eventually to start building it into their products a little bit so that you'll be able to see within maybe the PSA tool, maybe within uh, the Bright Gauge reporting tool, um, how certain things measure up against the industry uh, at large. Uh, and you'll also be able to import, if you are a sleek user, you'll be able to import data from your ConnectWise tools directly uh, into that tool. A um, few things to point out for anyone who is an existing uh, partner or a customer of service leadership. Uh, Paul is, is um, insistent that nothing is going to change here. Um, he's staying with the company, at least for a while here. Um, you, you know, your relationship with service leadership remains the same. Um, you are not going to be forced or compelled to become a ConnectWise user if you aren't today, although ConnectWise sees this, the connection, and uh, it, it'll be more and more um, real as opposed to notional over time. But the, the, the tight integration between Paul's data and the ConnectWise toolset, ConnectWise believes, will be a compelling reason uh, over time to become a, a ConnectWise partner, but nobody is going to be forced to do that. Um, and one last quick little note, um, you know, interesting, uh, Eric, uh, 
uh, Paul first went out and uh, sort of made it known that he was looking for an acquisition partner about two years ago. He got offers from a dozen different companies before he decided to select this particular one, which reflects, it's an indication of, of how respected Paul is, but also his uh, his data. Absolutely, Rich. And, you know, I've, I've known Paul for many, many years. I remember whiteboarding, you know, his his idea of, of what he wanted to do with this back, you know, in another lifetime when I ran an MSP practice. And, you know, we were an early adopter of, of his uh, methodologies um, as well. And, you know, it's it's really interesting to see the the value of that um, you know, being recognized by, you know, uh, Toma Bravo and ConnectWise as something that is, that is missing in platforms today, you know, and I've been, you know, banging my drum about this, you know, I have a secret, you know, uh, wish to develop something that gives these partners that kind of visibility, you know, Paul's light years ahead of me on this, but the ability to integrate with the PSA is the key to it because now you're just taking the data that's already there and reflecting it in ways and in dashboards and in views and filters that make it actionable and easy to interpret and make strategic decisions on for the business owner. I mean, you know, taking what Paul does in his service leadership index, uh, you know, and, and report back quarterly, now you have it in real time. Uh, day to day, week to week, to see how your business is operating in critical KPI, um, you know, metrics, um, and to help you tweak and tune that in real time. I think that's, um, you know, just going to benefit ConnectWise partners um, and service leadership partners that choose to utilize ConnectWise as their PSA and in ways that no one else is doing. You know, there's no shortage of vendors out there, uh, vendors who serve MSPs doing um, business growth advice or delivering business growth advice to their partners. Lots of webinars and white papers and tools uh, that people can use to understand how top performing MSPs do business. It's the quantitative nature of what service leadership does and that opportunity you're talking about to build that into tools to, to integrate um, between um, uh, self-serve management tools and uh, the line of business tools that people rely on every day. That's, that's different. Um, and uh, so it, it's in some sense not surprising that a lot of different vendors out there um, recognize that this was something that would be very valuable uh, to their partners. Agreed. Agreed. I mean, the ability to look at how you're performing against best in class today in this specific area, I think is worth everything. So uh, I'm wondering, your, your tip of the week may or may not have to do with some measurement uh, and some hard data as well. Right. So, um, <laughs> and again, you know, rip from the headlines as my tips of the weeks typically are of uh, working with a new uh, partner, uh, just a couple of calls in to really understanding, you know, where they are with their service desk and, you know, come to find out the, you know, after we, you know, peel back the onion a few layers, uh, service team isn't actually performing as well as, you know, leadership thought they were. And so the tip of the week this week is audit your service desk. So audit your service desk. Don't simply go by, you know, the daily reporting and what's happening and things like that, but really get into it and understand um, where the opportunities are for improvement. And I mean, this, this is the difference between, you know, percentages of EBITDA. This is the difference between uh, margin, you know, making and exceeding margin goals and, and, and maybe making margin goals, things like that. What are the things that we're doing? So uh, in this particular scenario, just a quick story, um, they were round robining the, the service dispatch, dispatch function, small, small team, so really not enough ticket load to, to qualify or justify a full-time dispatcher. So they were kind of time slicing that function between the three technicians. And boy, oh boy, Rich, um, they were able to disappear like 20 hours a month that nobody could figure out what was happening. And it was all being, you know, couched under the, the, uh, the, the category of dispatch. So 
that's a that was a big black hole. So we decided to make some changes there. Really don't really need to time slice that and all that. But it was just an example of one thing that came up. And as we started digging deeper, then oh, there are probably five or six things that we can just make a little tweak and have a significant improvement. And I think that's the takeaway for me from this tip of the week is yeah, you may feel like you're doing fine and you're highly utilized and doing great, but there's always that room for improvement. And it can mean a noticeable difference, tweaking and tuning a couple of things. So audit the service desk, take it from top to bottom. And I don't mean, you know, spend weeks and weeks doing it. You know what to look for and just make sure that everyone's doing what they're supposed to be doing, that the platform is optimized properly to give you the data you need. Cause that's the other big challenge, which is the platforms just aren't optimized properly. The, the work types aren't in there correctly. The issue types and subtypes aren't in there properly. So we've got a, a ton of tickets that are other that you can't report on. So take the time, audit the service desk, take your top five things that you need to do to, to, to make change quickly for rapid ROI and put it into place and then measure the outcome. I guarantee it'll be an improvement over what you're doing today. And you know, it, it really, that, that whole um, a piece of advice there goes to something, uh, two things really, that I know you are a huge believer in, we've spoken about before. And first of all, make sure you are collecting good and complete data in your PSA. And second, use that data. You know, it, it, it's not much good to you if it's in the PSA and you're not consulting it on a regular basis. So um, in this particular case with your, your new client here, you know, those insights, those service desk insights were, were lurking within uh, PSA reports. And this person was really kind of going by the seat of their pants, essentially, and the sense that the service desk was doing a great job. Once you actually start looking at the numbers, then you realize there are some opportunities for improvement. So, you know, make the right use of the PSA platform, get good, thick, rich data in there, and then consult, consult it on a regular basis so that you can actually use it to, to run your business more effectively. Agreed, Rich. I mean, you've got to have data and make these data-driven decisions. Don't go by what your gut says or what how you feel that day. Uh, take the time to optimize the platforms to give you the data that you need to look at because, you know, and, and it wasn't like the, you know, the partner, you know, felt that services was doing a great job, knew there was opportunities for improvement, but holy cow, you know, this was like, you know, over a year's time, probably could have added up to the salary of a dispatcher. You know what I mean? So <laughs> there you go. Well, uh, excellent piece of advice. It leaves us with time for just one more story this week. And you know, Eric, we, we are still uh, at a place globally where movie theaters generally in most places still not an option, but that has not stopped Scandinavia's biggest film festival from going ahead and having the festival uh, in 2021, it's just going to be a little bit different than usual. The The Gothenburg Film Festival uh, in Sweden will be taking place. It's just that this year it will be taking place on a small isolated island uh, and there will be precisely one person in attendance. Uh, her name is Lisa Enroth. She is a nurse in Sweden, a big film fan. She was one of 12,000 people who applied to be the only attendee of the film festival. Um, she certainly, I'm sure, had a very difficult year, so I'm glad somebody in the, the healthcare line of work turned out to be the winner. She is going to spend a week alone on the remote island of Paternoster watching film after film, all, all the, the movies that are part of the, the film festival. Uh, so, you know, the show goes on, Eric. Yeah, I wonder if they'll kick it off with Castaway. I'm not, you know, just trying to figure what was the, what's the playlist for a week of movies for one solitary person on a deserted island. <laughs> I, I hope she brings her own uh, popcorn and, uh, and candy. There is not going to be a, uh, you know, a stand to go to. Let's hope they treat her a little bit better than that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, folks, uh, that is all we've got time for this week. Thank you so much for joining us. If you like the show, you want to maybe uh, take a look at some episodes you didn't see in the past, you want to know about the new episodes when they go up, best thing to do is go to the Channel Pro Network channel on YouTube and become a subscriber. If you click that little bell icon, you'll actually get notified when the new episodes go live. 
Uh, to read more about ConnectWise buying service leadership and uh, what else is happening in the industry to get terrific business growth advice for your company, go to channelpronetwork.com every day because we've got terrific new content for you there every day. To learn more about Eric and the work he does with his clients, uh, please visit ericsimpson.com. That is E-R-I-C-K Simpson.com. Uh, so once again, folks, thank you very much for joining us. We're going to be back again next week with an, uh, another episode. Until then, please... Enjoy the rest of your week. Eric and I are enjoying the rest of your week already. Already. <laughs>